What is up everyone? It's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Scout Report. Special Scout Report. 800 subscriber edition Scout Report. Question and answer Scout Report. Man, I'm actually excited about this. Let's get it in. First and foremost, once again, thank you everyone who made this possible. Thank you to everyone who hit that subscribe button. Thank you to everybody to hit that like button. Thank you to everybody to leave a comment, watch the content, everything. They really appreciate it as the Scott Report is here for you and you guys are making this possible. And I promise to remain humble, but you know what? I think 1K is within reach. So with that being said, thank you especially to everybody that did take the time out to leave me a question so I can answer it for you on this video. We got about a handful and that's fine because I gotta start thinking of something for 1K because I think we really can't reach that together soon. So if you guys have any other questions after this video, go ahead and drop them. I'll probably answer them in the comments. In the meantime, what I would like, if you guys have any ideas of maybe what I can do for um, 1K, if it's something that's within my power to do, I'll go ahead and try to do it. I definitely have update that on that when it comes. But right now, I don't want to count my eggs before it hatch. That's just a little bit of looking in the future. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get it in with the questions. If I mispronounce your name or something, I'm sorry. I'll try my best, but I think we'll be okay. So without further ado, let's get down to the questions. This is fun. I'm really looking forward to this to let you guys know a little bit about your boy. We spend so much time together that it's only right, right? So let's see. All right. The first question comes from Elber Kanapi. What is your favorite anime of all time, Mr. Scott? He actually has two questions, but the first one is, what is your favorite anime of all time? Well, if you don't see it right back here, that's right. My favorite anime of all time is Yu Yu Hakusho, my number one anime of all time. And I'll give you a little bit extra. I'll tell you guys my top 10 anime, Yu Yu Hakusho, number one. Number two is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Number three is Kuroko no Basketball. Number four is Hunter Hunter. Number five is Dorawara. Number six is Mobile Suit Gundam Zeta, or Zeta Gundam. Number seven is Mobile Suit Gundam 8th MS Team. Number eight is Code Geass. Number nine is Kill la Kill. And number 10 is Trigun. That's my top 10. I mean, my, and those can vary a little bit, especially like with so many quality anime out there. I mean, it's things like Bebop and other things I haven't even mentioned. And there's also the thing that hit everybody like a storm, which is ReZero. That's going to find its way into. But to answer your question or your first question, my number one anime is Yu Yu Hakusho. It has a personal attachment for me as well, is why it's my number one because it's a big part of how I got really serious in the anime. Like I've always been otaku for as long as I can remem remember, at least since I was probably about eight or nine. But Yu Yu Hakusho was among the first series that I actually like started collecting and getting into along with the very first Bubblegum Crisis. I was introduced to it as more along of Dragon Ball Dark. And one of the reasons why I love Yu Yu Hakusho because the man, the guy, when he's not being lazy as fuck, Yoshihiro Togashi is one of the best writers when it comes to strategies, when it comes to battles, and when it comes to the good guy not always winning, when it comes to the bad guys actually being right, and when it comes to, even though it still happens, it not being ass fools, but just straight up strength, mind, and power overcoming battles. So Yu Yu Hakusho, that's one of the main reasons why it's my number one of all time. And a little bit of backstory of how I got into it. I used to collect Dragon Ball Z. I used to collect them on VHS. And I used to go to his little shop. And I would go there like every week or something and get a tape or two. I started from the beginning, went all the way to the end. And the shop owner of the place at the time, he was like, you know, I noticed you're coming here a lot. You've been coming here for years. I noticed you collect Dragon Ball and you're getting into anime. Have you ever heard of Yu Yu Hakusho? And I'm like, why, yes, I've seen, you know, commercials about it. I've seen it in magazines and things like that, but I never watched it because it was running on Toonami, but I used to always miss it for some reason because I think that was when it was on that weird time slot when it used to come on at like 6 a.m. So he was like, if you like Dragon Ball, you're going to love this. As a matter of fact, here, take these. Don't even pay for them. Take these, watch them, and bring them back. And he gave me the entire Dark Tournament because I knew roughly what the story was about. He gave me the entire Dark Tournament. Man, that was phenomenal. The Dark Tournament was about 30-ish episodes. 
and they fought probably about 26 of them, if not 28. So that just blew my mind. And then, you know, the fact when you get to the end where Yusuke didn't win, you know, the King arc or whatever, he just went back home. So that was pretty big because, you know, you always expect the predictable for the main character to win and things like that. When we got to the Sensui arc and the chapter Black arc, he was right. I mean, even though he just went off the wrong path, he was right about, you know, people treating the demons wrong and things like that. And also, it's another personal level for me because at the time, it was myself and two of my very close friends and one of them passed away. We were trying to actually get a manga together. And this actually goes to one of the questions I have later, so I'll get into that in detail too. But um, my character was loosely based off of Yusuke because, you know, we were kids. You know, we didn't we were thinking of our own things, but, you know, everybody was inspired by something. And, you know, we kind of had the groundwork to lay off of. It was like a demon hunter type thing. And my character was kind of loosely based off Yusuke because I love the ray gun. I think that is the most iconic move in anime. I can go on and on about why Yu Yu Hakusho is my number one anime. So there's your answer to that. Now, Hilbert did have a second question. And it was, what fall anime are you going to re I'm sorry. Is it possible for you to review or live react to Gintama? Now, Gintama. I love Gintama. I'm not caught up on Gintama. And Gintama is probably 400 episodes if I'm not right. And I cheated. And I just watched like the last arc because I heard it really got serious. But I heard Gintama is one of the most funniest animes next to probably Mr. Osamasu. Unfortunately, I won't be live reacting or reviewing Gintama because I'm not completely caught up on the series. I mean, I caught up by reading on it and watching like chibi reviews and things like that. But I don't think I have the wealth of knowledge enough to re to watch Gintama and review it. You know, live react could be a possibility. So you know what? I'll leave that on a maybe because I know it is the final arc. But we'll just have to see where it goes. For right now, I'm, unfortunately, I won't be. But that's not a definite no. All right. So thank you for your question. Now for our next question, I'm sorry I kind of butchered this and went into it already. This one comes from Jose Frieto. He says, what fall anime are you going to review for the fall? Now, I do have a video of everything that I am reviewing, so you can definitely check that out. But you took the time to ask me a question. It's only right that I answer it for you. So bear with me a moment while I get my schedule out because I actually have my schedule planned out for the fall. And you can see some of the things I'm reviewing already. You saw Saturday I reviewed um, Magical Girl Raising Project and Sunday we had Gundam. So, and we also had Tiger Mask, but here we go. So, just know that I'm going to have probably a video every day, at least once, or maybe, or at least five days out the week, which is still good. I like that the fall season is more gapped out again, like how it was in spring, because I can do a review, bam, get back to my day. I love the summer season, I really did, but that Friday was killing me. Friday, Saturday, Sunday was killing me with having three, four shows on and then having to review them all. I like things being a little bit gapped out, but um, for Saturdays, I have Magical Girl Raisin Project review. Um, Tiger Mask, I'm experimenting with Tiger Mask right now to do that um, as a live reaction. That's actually going to be on Sundays. Um, I'm going to give it a few episodes, test the water with it. It's fun, it's zany. But I don't know if I'm going to stick with it permanently. Of course, also on Sunday, I have Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphan Season 2. Highly jacked for that. That will be live reaction. I mean, that will be a review. I'm sorry, not live reaction. Gundam will be a review. Um, if I do a live react to Gundam, I have to know it's going to be a battle. Because the thing about Gundam, Gundam is better suited for reviews. Because it's a political and there's so much exposition in it. That you never know when a battle is going to jump off. So it will be kind of boring just to be sitting here like this. And then when a the battle jump off, like, oh shit. It's just um, too unpredictable with Gundam because Gundam overall is about the military story and not like the action itself. Now, Token Rambu is something that I have on my watch list. I didn't get a chance to watch it. This was an earlier list. Um, I was going to review that. Unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, let's see. Mondays, as you've seen yesterday, I have Trickster. I'll be reviewing Trickster on Monday, and I'm giving it the three-episode rule. Um, Tuesday will be the Promise Neverland chapter reviews for the manga, and it'll be left over. It'll be leftover space. Anything that I didn't get to on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday will be filled in on either Monday or Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we're gonna have Boom Go Stray Dogs coming back. That's gonna be a review. Thursday. 
I'm really thinking about live reaction to Keicho. Just because it looks so zany and over the top that I might just have a live reaction for you guys. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole series, but I think I'm definitely going to live react to the first episode. Be on the lookout for that. Um, any manga reviews, because I am trying to get back into manga reviews besides The Promised Neverland, will also be on Thursdays. I'm really thinking about Boku no Hero. I don't want to say I tapped out on One Piece. I just feel that I'm not as good of a reviewer for One Piece as others out there. So I need to up my game a little bit for One Piece. I know practice make perfect. So I'm still working on the manga reviews, but I promise if I do anything else, you'll definitely get Promise Neverland, but if I pick up another manga review, that will be within a few weeks, next few weeks or so. Then we get to Friday, the day that is going to wreck me because Friday is going to be the live reactions to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4. And I'm going to do JoJo kind of like how I started. Like, I will do live reactions. It's going to be a mix between the spring and the summer season where I'm going to kind of put my feelers out there and see if the episode is live reaction worthy. And if it is, do a live reaction. And if it's not, I'm just going to do a regular review. But also coming on Fridays, we're going to have Drifters live reaction. And that is going to be on Crunchyroll, making it even easier to live react to that. Um, also on Fridays now, depending on when it gets translated, because Ajin is actually being held up by Netflix as far as the translation. So that's what happened to it last season or in the winter where it could have came out any day between Saturday and like Tuesday sometime. So if Ajin comes out on Friday, I think I have so much on my clip plate on Fridays that it will be out on Saturday or Sunday when I review Ajin. Um, also, we're cross. Low storage for cross is starting this as well, and that's going to be on Friday. So that'll be either between Friday and Sunday when you have that. Because Saturday is going to be exclusively for Magical Girl Raisin Project and Occultic Nine. So that's what I'm going to get. Now, March comes in like a lion. Is another series I'm really interested in, especially after getting into Slice of Life after watching Orange. But we'll just have to see where it goes. Um, I'm definitely going to watch it. But I got to give it a few to see if I'm going to review it or not. I'm definitely going to watch that first episode and determine from there. And then coming down the line is something called Luger Code. And just because it's about werewolves, I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. So, to make this shorter for you, the things that I will have for this season is um, Magical Girl Raisin Project, Gundam, Ajin, Drifters, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Rick Cross, Promise Neverland Manga Chapters, Bungo Stray Dogs, yeah, Occultic Nine. So, yeah, that's about it. Now, it might be some things here and there. Some things might get dropped. Some more things might get picked up. But that is the for sure schedule. Long story short, you got at least five days of content coming from your boy, if not seven. So, we just have to see where it goes. And while I'm on that subject as well, if I start to get burned out, I apologize to you guys. It might be like a week or a few days where I don't review anything and I'm just going to skip the episode. And I'm sorry for that. But hey, sometimes I come home, I'm tired. And I really want to get something out, but I want to sleep too. So it's going to happen. But that doesn't mean I'm going away. I promise to stay here with you guys. But everybody needs a break. So we just have to see where it went from there. And the reason why I missed that is because we didn't really get a break between the fall and summer season. Um, it's like you usually get like a week break or a couple of days. But it's like everything ran right into each other. It's like Mob Psycho, once all that went off, we were bam, right back into the fall season with things starting on Friday. So that's that. Thank you very much for your question, Jose. And now we're going to go on to the next one. Now, this question comes from Days 3 x What's up? How's it going? Now, you first three, um, Days, Jose, and um, Elbert, you guys, I recognize you guys all the time. You guys are always coming through, always showing support. Thank you for that. And just because I mentioned these guys don't mean I don't recognize everybody else. But they are usually the first people to comment on my stuff. So thank you guys very much for that. I'm so glad that you are a fan of me. I mean, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate everybody. It's like I was saying, I'm probably going to end up gushing and thanking you guys in this video more than anything. But let's go ahead and get to um, the days' question. What is your favorite video game or video games? Oh, man, that is a tough one. If I was on an island and I only had to pick one game or two, I, can, I can't really narrow it down, so I'll just give you a couple of favorites. I would definitely say if I had to choose, it would be between Streets of Rage 2 
or in Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. I mean, if I, if I had to choose between those two, if it's only picking one game, it would be between one of those two. Um, my favorite RPG, though, is Chrono Trigger, hands down. Chrono Trigger is the greatest RPG of all time to me. That, I really love Persona 4 as well, and everybody loves the Final Fantasy series. Personally, I like 6 more than 7, but 7 did so much groundbreaking. I'm also very heavy into fighting games. I've been playing fighting games for as long as I've been playing... I mean, reading and watching manga, watching anime, reading manga. My favorite fighting games, I would say, is Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. The King of Fighters series, like all of them. I love King of Fighters and Tekken. Tekken is my all-time favorite um, fighting game because it's so real. And I'm a martial artist. That's something you guys don't know about me or maybe I mentioned. I'm pretty sure I mentioned before. But I'm a martial artist. Um, so the realism in Tekken, I love the realism of the moves and the movement system. The counters and everything like that so favorite video game again i can't choose between streets of rage 2 and a link to the past so that would be my favorite video game thank you very much for that question i mean that's another subject that i can go on and on about because even uncharted gets into that and recently i fell in love with don garapa which is also something i'm very excited for a little bit of news for ps4 they're gonna re-release don garapa 1 and 2 to get you geared up for Don Garoppa V3 when that comes out, another phenomenal series. So we're getting off track though. Let's get back to the questions. The next question comes from the Lord Elric. What's good? Full Metal Alchemist stand up again, number two anime of all time. Love it. And this question is: What made you want to start a YouTube channel? Did you have any particular inspiration for it? That's a very good question. Thank you very much for asking that. Well, what made me start a YouTube channel? This is like a multi-part response for me because there's so many things about it. And to answer your question, um, I did have particular inspiration, but it's like more than one inspiration. So I guess it's backstory time. So sit back and relax. Well, um, something that you will see in my links and something I mentioned in my videos is that I am also part of a podcast, part of the Born to Be Different podcast network. And on that podcast, along with my best friend, CJ, we do a podcast called Imperfect Geniuses where your boy also got your back on comic books, movies, news, all that type of stuff, entertainment. So we do a podcast on there. And the Scott Report actually started off as a segment on that podcast. However, we, were, we only do it every other week. So I had so much content that I didn't want to hog the show. So I was just sitting one day and I said, you know what? I kind of want to do my own thing. So that's what made me decide to go ahead and do YouTube, do reviews, because I started getting into the weekly anime. Like before I started, I didn't really watch anime this much. I mean, I always watched anime. But what I mean by that is prior to 2013, I was a shonen head. Like really the only thing I was watching was like Bleach, One Piece, and Naruto, things like that. And the things that I have seen, I will watch once they were over. I really didn't get into watching things every day every week until like attack on titan drop cycle pass you know 2012 2013 is when i started doing um when i started doing like the weekly thing watching anime every day anime truly became like at that point as again i've always been otaku and it's kind of like i wish i would have did this thing back then when you know it was only a couple of people around like back then it probably was only like glass reflection bob samurai and like forever world or something but because it's a lot of people out here now and it's good that it's being so well received because that kind of leads into the inspiration as well as that i watch so many youtubers and i look at them and say you know what i love doing this i want to talk to more people this is fun i want to do it myself so my inspiration is kind of like i have friends who you know they watch anime but they they're not into it like i am and i just have so much i want to express so much i want to talk about and these guys are just watching like attack on titan in like 2016 so it's like uh. so that's why i started the youtube channel to um basically find an avenue to talk to more people find more like-minded people about these things and i definitely did that with youtube as far as inspirations everybody in some shape form or fashion especially if you're doing anime reviews now had to have been inspired by chibi reviews the guy is so hard working this is this guy's job and he's so good at it i started off watching his videos actually i started off watching for never world and then the phone 999 because you know they were cool and they used to like cover bleach in one piece but i watched started watching more 
things more frequently. And then I discovered Chibi as he had like a more vast variety of things that he started to watch. So I watched Chibi reviews for a while and once I started watching his videos and then I started to see more and more and more people come along and all these people with all these nice ideas and thoughts and theories. And then I ran into a certain page and some of you subscribers already know where I'm going with this. I found a certain page of a YouTuber by the name of Sloan the Female Otaku. And I was just captivated by her page and Sloan's a great person. I'm very happy to call her my friend. And I was just captivated by like her personality. I was captivated by her videos because just like Chibi, she had a vast variety of things that she covered. She was constantly uploading content. She put so much love and passion to it. She cared about her subscribers so much. Her AMVs are boss. And she's very responsive as well. So it's like, it kind of sparked something within me to say, you know what? You've always wanted to do this and you see people out here doing it. Go ahead and do it too. So. I guess the long story short or even longer story short is even though I started off with a podcast um, from the podcast, I wanted to expand on that. Then I started, you know, really looking at the other YouTubers and saying, you know what? I want to give this a shot too. So that is how a Scott report was born folks. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you very much for that question as well. And let's go ahead and go to the next one, which comes from Bond Franklin. Bond asks favorite anime of the year so far and why? Well, I think this answer is pretty much unanimous with everybody, and that would have to be ReZero. And the reason why ReZero is my favorite anime of the year so far is because it gave you everything on every center. I'm a big psychological fan, and that series mind fucked me so much that I came back for more every week. It's a nicely told story. It has one of the best characters in anime in Subaru. A very flawed character, a character that acknowledges flaws and grew from being pretty much selfish, being an unlikable character at times, to being one of the best characters, even though he did make a questionable decision with who he chose to love, but that's another thing entirely. It's just Subaru himself as a character in the series itself was such a gem, and I haven't seen a series that complete or that drew me in so much since, you know, easily Cold Geass or Full Metal Alchemist. Again, that's why I'm saying that it's going to end up etching its way into my top 10. I just gotta find out what needs to go. It's a very hard decision, but my favorite anime of the year is ReZero. And with us being in the fall season, we are at the tail end of the season. It's still some things that could come along and take it out of its roots, but you know what, really, I think it's, it's been lapping people since probably the spring as far as being best anime. So that's my anime of the year. And finally, our last question comes from Oscar Burano. And Oscar asks, are you gonna check out the Mob Psycho 100 manga? And that answer is hell yes. After seeing that finale, I definitely want to dive into the manga. I'm just kind of backlogged right now on other things. Like I caught up with Bungo Straight Off, so I was reading that. I'm trying to catch up with Ajin because I want to kind of um, refresh and be ahead for that for season two. Also, I'm reading A Silent Voice. Uh, man. I'm going to get into Noragami. I mean, it's just going to have to make his way into the pile as well as, you know, with me keeping up with the weekly mangas like Tokyo Ghoul, um, One Piece, Promise Neverland, Boku no Hero. This, I really do want to read the manga and I will read the manga and who knows if we're going to get a season two. So that's why I'm going to read the manga. So that's the answer. Is yes, I am going to read the manga. So that was all the question, guys. Once again, if you have any more questions for me, just drop it in the comments. I'll go ahead and answer that question for you in the comment. And I'm going to start thinking on what I can do for when we do hit 1K for whenever it is. I definitely want to make that a special video. So I'm going to go ahead and think about that as well. Once again, thank you guys very, very, very much for all the support and all the love you give your boy Infrared Scott here at the Scott Report. I really appreciate it. And every time I start saying thank you, you guys, I have to admit, I get a little bit, get a little bit choked up as tough as the guys I am. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here, guys. If you like this video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're a new a new person coming by because there is not a shortage of content for you guys to indulge on on this channel. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. Joe's listening to me. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, 
It's your boy Infrared signing out on this road to 1K. See you soon.